Welcome to Richard and Greg, a channel dedicated to discussion, debate and argument on a whole array of topics. The coronavirus figures are still rising, with over 2.4 million cases worldwide and 165,000 deaths. We have a few questions to ask Greg this morning, in addition to the normal update figures. And these questions really centre around whether lockdowns being eased are a good idea or not. So let's go over and listen to our discussion with Greg. Welcome to Richard and Greg. Today is Monday the 20th of April 2020 and the time is 10.30 a.m. GMT plus one. Now the coronavirus figures are still rising with over 2.4 million cases worldwide and 165,000 reported deaths. Now we have a few questions to ask Greg this morning, in addition, of course, to the normal figure update. Questions such as, why is Britain so high in the league table of number of cases? We are, after all, sixth globally, and even higher in the terms of deaths. We're fifth globally. We'll also ask him, why are other European countries beginning to deem it appropriate to relax rules on businesses so that they may open. While Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, is less persuaded, announcing this morning that he fears any relaxation in our isolation procedures could lead to a second wave of infections. And thirdly, whilst we all agree that in America, it's up to state governors to decide when to relax their lockdown arrangements, a number have indicated they are going to do this almost imminently, in, at least in some measure. Are they right to do so? Or is Boris Johnson's caution more appropriate? Three key questions. So let's go over to Greg and see his answers to these. Greg, good morning. Good morning. And another lovely morning here. And actually, there are great advantages to the lockdown in this kind of weather. There's very little traffic around, which makes my garden a pleasure to be in because you can't hear any traffic noise. And everybody is doing something different. So they're not calling on one for the normal things. There are a few people I phone up to check that they're all right. The elderly help, helping the elderly, I guess. We're at a stage now with Two and a half million people have registered with the disease. Although we know that these figures are wildly inaccurate, uh, let us assume that they've been wildly accurate right from the beginning. So when we are at least measuring like with like to some extent, it's increasing. It's continuing to increase. The figures are dramatic. The numbers of deaths are dramatic. We're looking at 165,000 at the moment so far. And that doesn't count in most countries, deaths outside of hospital. We have at least another 4,000 deaths in care homes as estimated by one of the biggest care home providers in Britain then there are deaths at home. So already, realistically, Britain has somewhere over 20,000 deaths from coronavirus. This is horrific. It is at all levels of society. Granted, when you look at the number of deaths from other causes, they are down a marked amount, most probably because people who would have died anyway have died of the coronavirus as the accelerant that brought about the end. There is no way we can be complacent about this. And it is my opinion that Boris Johnson has been just about spot on all the way through this. His workload was phenomenal. He ended up with what would probably have been a fairly minor case of COVID-19, uh, similar to that of his partner, who 
let us all remember, is currently pregnant and expecting a baby this summer who had COVID-19 and recovered at home. Boris went on working, which debilitated him to some extent, and he ended up in intensive care. Now he is being attacked because it's all seen as his fault. How they work that out, I'm not sure. I think it's just a case of opposition parties not having a clue what they would do if they were in the position. But it's easy to criticise when people are working without a blueprint because we have no experience of this ever before in modern history. Why have we got more deaths? This is actually fairly understandable when you look at a demo demography map and you see the density of population. We are one of the most densely populated countries in the Western world. We are, in fact, pretty high as a densely populated country for our land mass and our population of 67 million. It is natural when we have so many major conurbations that we will have a higher rate of death. We have a much, much smaller area than a country like Germany, with a not greatly dissimilar population. This means that people live on a daily basis, much closer together. We also tend not to live in fairly large tracts of our own country. The Pennines, areas of Northumberland, Scotland, parts of Wales, for starters. So I'm not surprised we have a higher death rate. I think there's no way that we can call this acceptable, but it is inevitable. Just as we have a national health service, the service of which has been fractured as a result of the European Union with their, in my opinion, idiotic policy of devolution. And let us not forget that the health service is devolved to the regional assemblies in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. So they make their own decisions. And let us not forget that it is the responsibility of the health service on the money allocated to them by the government to make provisions for emergencies within their service. It is not the government's fault that there is inadequate PPE. It is the health service's fault. They do the ordering. The government has stepped in to assist. If they want a raft of hugely overpaid individuals in their management structure, then that's going to come out of their direct health budget. One wonders how many luxury cars are actually billed to the health service. Consultants who buy themselves Porsches and top-end Mercedes, Audis and the like at the expense of the health service. That could have far more readily been based on having adequate supplies in situ for a potential outbreak of this kind. However, in defense of the health service, one can bet one's life that if one had stocked up on adequate number of ventilators, you would find that the pandemic that came along turned out to be cholera and nobody needed a vent ventilator or a new strain 
of another disease that didn't affect the respiratory system. So there is no way you can prepare for every eventuality. I personally believe that we've done a pretty good job so far. Of course, there have been errors. Nobody's any experience of distributing the millions of items, and it is literally millions of items that are needed for full personal protection for everybody who needs personal protection in care homes, as social workers and carers, and as hospital workers, and the many other jobs that require contact with the public. Okay, Greg, that's great. Now, let's have a look. I mean, it, it was announced this morning, Germany is starting to reopen smaller shops after deciding the outbreak is coming under control. The Czech Republic has now allowed some markets and other small businesses to restart. We know there is growing pressure in the United States by the president to start opening for business again. And yet Boris Johnson has said, that he is highly skeptical about these moves, particularly due to a fear of a second wave of infections. So why do you feel that other countries within Europe are more, if you like, relaxed about the situation? And should they be? No, they shouldn't be. But we have an economy that has been due to good provision through austerity, which was essential after 13 year, year, unlucky years of misrule, we had to have a, a long period to recover from the efforts of the government to bankrupt us as a country. We had to have a, a prolonged period of austerity to top up the coffers. Luckily, we have enough money to be able to sustain the current lockdown for a little longer. It's a struggle and we will probably take a hit on our economy of somewhere near a third of our gross domestic product as a result of this. But we are in a position to continue. We also have a fairly astute public, a public who are not in a state of uprising, wandering around in the streets, protesting and carrying firearms, as is happening in a number of American states. There isn't that political pressure, nor is there political pressure of an election in November, which is impinging on all of the decisions of Trump's administration as they seek to hang on to their jobs and the terror they have over a poor economy because they know that if the economy looks dire they will lose their jobs. Then Italy. Italy is basically a busted flush economically. It has sold out so many of its major businesses in the north of Italy to China, literally trillions of dollars worth, which is why it had such an outbreak and such rapidity in northern Italy of the spread because of the number of Chinese in their society now with the companies that they now own. Italy's economy cannot sustain continuing in, to in total lockdown. And you will note their lockdown in nor northern Italy particularly has been considerably more extreme than that in Britain. Different countries have different pro problems. We've seen the near riots that are starting in the townships around Johannesburg because they have a total lockdown. There's food shortages. And people have now started to make the decision in Southern Africa that the virus won't kill them as fast as starvation. 
there, there are huge tracts of Southern Africa where the people have absolutely no savings and no food if they lose their job. And millions have lost their jobs. They have no income, they have no savings, and there is no government organized free distribution of food because the economy can't sustain free distribution. They cut down on uh, shopping to the point where you cannot buy anything except plain foods. I don't mean in terms of flavor, I mean in terms of uh, luxury goods, food-wise, are no longer on, on the market. You're not allowed to buy them. You cannot buy tobacco, and you cannot buy alcohol. So the townships are in dire, dire plight. They cannot sustain this for much longer without open rioting. Already there is looting in some areas, particularly of supermarkets and uh, food distributors. So it is a fine line for every country to make decisions. France, their position is they will make efforts to avoid it, but they can expect Macron to enforce, just as everything else in France is enforced with the police force, an armed police force, who are seem quite happy to attack the citizens if they step out of line. Don't forget, before coronavirus, they'd had over a year of protests in all major cities in France every single weekend. It's a country that cannot be kept locked down without armed force from the police. So every country's situation is different. Why has Germany got such a low rate? One, they have a certain area with a given population that immediately provides a fair amount of social distancing. Don't forget they have big areas of very rural forest, large areas of agricultural land relative to a country like Britain. They also have a health service which is extensively privatized. Net result, they don't just have an NHS hospital. There are many smaller hospitals that make their own provision and have a higher income because they have corporate backing from the people who have health plans with them, the corporations. Don't forget, many companies in Germany have a doctor who visits the factory or the offices on a regular basis and is the company doctor, a situation that we don't extensively have in this country. We have a national health service damaged at the moment by turning it into a regional health service. We can hopefully, once Brexit is completed and on the 31st of December, start to look seriously at the stupidity of breaking up these islands into autonomous regions, which it has been incredibly damaging for Wales and almost destructive for Scotland. Now that's fair Greg and of course we can't forget that prior to coronavirus Germany itself was on the brink of recession and so it too must be very worried about the effect this will not only have had 
but will continue to have on businesses moving forward. Greg, thank you very much. Yeah, it, it's a difficult question because there are some commentators who say, actually, poverty can lead to more deaths than coronavirus. Mental health issues can lead to significant increases in domestic crime. Being forced to stay at home can indulge those who are geared towards that activity. And therefore, sometimes the cost of the lockdown can arguably, on occasion, be greater than what will happen if those restrictions were somewhat eased. Greg, thank you very much. Much appreciate your time. My pleasure. We'll speak again on this matter within the next couple of days. I have no doubt. No doubt at all. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you enjoyed that discussion. If you wish to help support this channel, we've placed various Amazon links in the description box below, all of which are self-explanatory, and any purchases from which we shall receive a small commission to help grow the channel further. Meanwhile, please do not forget to subscribe and press the bell sign so that you're notified of any future videos as and when they are published. In addition, we have two complementary channels, the first Illuminati Silver and the second Trump for President 2020. And if either of these are of interest to you, then kindly go over to those likewise and subscribe. Until next time.